Hey everybody, it's Scott Shetler and welcome to this week's episode of Strength and Health TV. What we're going to talk about this week is the concept of prehab exercises. Uh, prehab or prehabilitation exercises are exercises that we usually implement at the end of a workout. They're typically done for really high reps with the goal being to pump some blood into the muscles to help with restoration and recovery. Now, the other goal with doing the really high rep exercises at the end of the workout is to also help build the, uh, the tendons, the connective tissue and things like that. So we look at these as more health promoting exercises, typically for weaker joints. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we do is targeting the shoulders, the elbows, the lower back and the hamstrings. Now there's many different things that we use for resistance. One of my favorite things to use is bands, which I'm going to show tonight, but we'll also sometimes use things like uh, ankle weights or we'll use machines or other forms of weight, but the key is it's usually really lightweight, something that we can do for lots and lots of reps. At the minimum, we shoot for about 100 reps per workout, and typically we're going to do those in at least 25 rep sets. Now, usually the way that I do it is the first, the first set that I do, I do for as many reps as I can, and then I just finish out the rest of the, the, rest of the, the goal reps in smaller sets of like 25 or 30. So I, I usually try to go 25 reps minimum and that's usually going to dictate the amount of weight that I'm going to use if it's a machine or a free weight exercise. But again tonight I'm going to look at some of the uh, band exercises that we do. Now this is something that I learned from uh, the West Side Barbell Club from Louis Simmons. Louis is a big proponent of a lot of these exercises. Dave Tate from Elite Fitness Systems has written a lot about this too. So I'm really not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just showing some of the exercises that I found to be very beneficial for myself as well as the athletes and some of the lifters that I train. Now generally what we do is at the end of an upper body workout we're going to do one or two movements focusing on the elbow joint or the shoulder joint or both and then on lower body workouts we're going to do one or two movements focusing on the lower back, uh, the hips, and uh, the knees. Uh, the, the, there's a couple different ways we usually program these in either at the end of the lower body workout we do one or two movements for the lower body joints at the end of the upper body workout we do one or two movements for the upper body joints sometimes I'll just do you know all four of these exercises as its own workout like on a day that I'm not doing a primary workout or instead of doing the movements right at the end of the workout I might do them later in the day and a few hours after I've trained to again assist with restoration and recovery. So I want to get into the exercises here so let's take a look at the upper body movements that I generally do. The first one is a push down with the bands. Now this can also be done on a pulley system you know with a if you've got like a, a lat pull down machine or a, or a cable crossover or something like that where you can do tricep press downs with really light weight for high reps but the movements that I'm going to show today are done with resistance bands. Now the resistance bands that I use are uh, I've got some from Westside Barbell, I've got some from Jump Stretch and I've got some from Elite Fitness Systems. The size bands all give about the same amount of tension. Uh, I've not used any other bands so I can't say if a, a light band from a different company is about the same amount of tension but that's really nothing you need to worry about. Generally for most of these movements we're going to use light bands, we're going to use mini bands uh, or we're going to use an average or a strong band for some of the movements. So the tension isn't something you need to be totally concerned about. Just make sure that the band that you're using provides enough resistance but not so much that you can't get the target number of repetitions. So for the band push down, generally you're going to anchor an, a light band over a pull up bar or a power rack and then you're just going to take an even grip on the band, pulling the band down by extending the elbows totally locking out and pulling the band apart at the bottom so that you get full flexion in the tricep and then come back up under control. So you're not going to jackhammer through these with bad technique. You're going to push down and lock it out and then resist the band on the way up. Push down, lock it out, resist the band on the way up. And like I said, we're typically going to do 100 reps minimum. We usually shoot for between 100 or 200 per workout. The first set that you do, or the first set that I do is usually going to be my max number of reps that I can get in that set. Usually with the, with the light band, I can usually get somewhere around 50 reps or so on the push downs. Then I'll take a little rest, a very short rest, and then I'll start doing sets of 20 to 30, usually about 25, until I hit that 100 or 150 or 200, whatever I'm trying to get for the workout. Sometimes I'll superset those with another upper body movement. The one that I like to do for the shoulders, the back of the shoulders, is a uh, band pull apart. So with this one, I'm generally going to use a mini band, and I'm going to take the band, both sections of the band in my hands, palms facing down, hands about shoulder width apart. Keeping the elbows straight, what I'm going to do is retract the shoulder blades, pulling the band apart so that it stretches across the chest. So what you're trying to do here 
is pinch your shoulder blades together, stretching the band. What you don't want to do is use the triceps and press out by extending the elbows. All right, so this is targeting the upper back behind the, uh, the back of the shoulder, the posterior deltoid or the rear deltoid. And uh, you're trying to initiate that movement again by pinching the shoulder blades together, retracting the shoulder blades as you stretch that band across your chest. So again, the band pull apart is one that I like to do for the upper body. I'll generally work that with the band push downs at the end of an upper body workout or I'll do them later in the day for restoration, but generally 100 to 200 reps is what I'm gonna shoot for per workout. For the lower body, two of my favorite exercises, one for the lower back is a good morning with the band. Now for this, you're gonna want a little bit stronger band. Uh, I use either the average band or I'll use a strong band. So you want something that's gonna give you a little bit more tension because this is a pretty strong movement, even when you are going for higher reps. So with the band, good morning, you're gonna place the band over the traps, the upper part of the shoulders, and then bend over and stand on the band. And then from here, you want your feet about shoulder width apart or a little bit wider. You're just gonna sit back into a good morning, folding at the hips, and then drive the hips forward, locking out the movement. So this is just like doing a good morning with the barbell on your back. You wanna make sure that you are bending over and not doing a squat and bending down with the knees, but you're trying to affect the lower back and the hips. So folding at the hips, hinging at that joint, and then driving the hips forward, locking out the glutes to uh, strengthen the lower back. So again, this is a good morning with the bands. And just like the upper body movements, I generally do as many reps as I can do on the first set, and then I break it up into sets of about 20 to 30, usually about 25 until I hit my target number of reps for the day. Sometimes I will superset it with the other lower body exercise I do. One of the ones that I particularly like the most is to do a leg curl with the bands. For this, I'm usually gonna use a mini band or like a monster mini. Uh, for really high reps, I can't really use the, the light band for a ton of reps, I usually fatigue too quick. But if you're strong enough to, by all means, go for it. So with the uh, banded leg curl, you wanna place a bench away from a power rack, choke the, the mini band down around the base of the rack, and put both feet in the band so that the band is right up around the ankles. Now from here, what you're gonna do, straighten out your legs, you're gonna curl back by, by flexing the knees, and you're also gonna push the feet out as you curl back. So curl back and push the feet out really explosively, and then stretch it back. So that's the banded leg curl. And like I said, the goal here is high repetitions. So just like all the other exercises, I'm gonna do as many as I can on the first set, and then I'm gonna break it up into about sets of 25 or so until I hit my target number of reps. Sometimes I'll superset the leg curls with the band of good mornings at the end of a lower body workout or I'll do them later in the day as part of a uh, restoration workout for the lower body. Again, sometimes if I don't get them done on the lower body or upper body days, on my off days, I might take all four of these exercises and circuit them together as an extra workout. But again, with these movements, the goal is the higher repetitions and the, the focus for prehab movements is restoration, recovery, and uh, kind of strengthening the, uh, the weak joints that, that are being used in the movements. Uh, so you'll find that you get a lot of blood flow, you pump a lot of blood into the muscles, you get a really warm feeling around those joints, and I find that I recover faster after my heavier workouts and that my joints just feel better altogether. So there are many other versions of prehab exercise you could do. You could use really light dumbbells and do like shoulder raises, bent over shoulder raises, you do tricep extensions, you can use cable pulley machines, you do tricep push downs, you can use leg curl machines. But again, regardless of the medium that you're using, you always wanna make sure that the goal is light weights with really, really high reps. And it's not, if you're shooting for 100 reps, it's not doing 10 sets of 10. It's trying to knock out that 100 reps in as few sets as possible. I know that in uh, George Hackenschmidt's book that I've referenced a lot in some of my previous videos, The Way to Live in Health and Physical Fitness, he even talks about doing this full body workout with really light hand leg dumbbells or something uh, uh, with the purpose of uh, uh, flushing the body, uh, so to speak, you know, pumping blood and, and, and stuff through the muscles, enhancing circulation to, to uh, help promote recovery from uh, more strenuous exercise. So that's generally the goal of the prehab movements. Again, they're called prehabilitation movements with the goal of being injury prevention so that you don't end up having to do rehab movements 
uh, as a result of letting something like this lack in your uh, training program. So hopefully this uh, video gave you some tips and ideas for incorporating some of the, these movements into your training. If you've got any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below the video. Uh, so if there's uh, you know, anything that you have uh, regarding the prehab movements, feel free to either shoot me an email or leave them in the comments section. Hopefully, again, this video will stimulate some uh, thinking and some ideas for how you can incorporate this into your training program. And until next week, as always, stay strong, stay healthy.